Good morning. Welcome to Inside Talk Show. Inside Talk Show, it's an inside job. Life is an inside job. Happy Monday. We're continuing the reading of Out from the Heart by James Allen. We're on chapter one, The Heart and the Life. We're finishing this up today. So we left off on Friday. Sorrow and happiness, suffering and enjoyment, fear and hope, hatred and love, ignorance and enlightenment are nowhere but in the heart. And as we remembered, the heart is in the subconscious mind, is nowhere but in the heart, our subconscious mind, our heart of hearts. They are solely mental conditions. Man is the keeper of his heart. Man is the keeper of his heart, the watcher of his mind, the solitary guard of his citadel of life. As such, he may be diligent or negligent. He can keep his heart more and more carefully. He can more strenuously watch and purify his mind, and he can guard against the thinking of unrighteous thoughts. This is the way of enlightenment and bliss. We must remain awake. I know, Carla, it was so nice to stay asleep. Was it really? <laughs> Being asleep at the wheel, I kept bumping into things and crashing and ending up places I didn't want or didn't really think about. Now being awoken and having my eyes wide open, at first it can seem worse, like, whoa, ignorance is bliss, man. I wish I could just not know all this. But both are uncomfortable. One just gets us closer to enlightenment and to peace. And the staying asleep just leads to suffering and death. On the other hand, okay, so it ended... We can more and more strenuously watch and purify our mind, and we can guard against the thinking of unrighteous thoughts. This is the way of enlightenment and bliss. On the other hand, we can live loosely and carelessly, neglecting the supreme task of rightfully ordering our life. This is the way of self-delusion and suffering. Let a person realize that life in its totality proceeds from the mind, and lo, the way of blessedness is opened up to them for they will then discover that they possess the power to rule their mind and to fashion it in accordance with their ideal so will they neglect so will they elect to strongly and steadfastly walk those pathways of thought and action which are although altogether excellent to them, life will become more beautiful and sacred, and sooner or later, they will put to, fl to flight all evil, confusion, and suffering. For it is impossible for a person to fall short of liberation, enlightenment, and peace, who guards with unwearying diligence the gateway of their heart. I love that. <sighs> Let a man realize that life in its totality proceeds from the mind. And lo, the way of blessedness is open to him, for he will then discover that he possesses the power to rule his mind and to fashion it in accordance to his ideal, ideal with a capital I, dream, a dream, an idea you've fallen madly in love with, that you're obsessed with, have a magnificent obsession about. Mm. So will he neglect to strongly and steadfastly walk those pathways of thought and action which are altogether excellent. To him, life will become beautiful and sacred, and sooner or later he will put flight to every evil, confusion, and suffering. For it is impossible for a man to fall short of liberation, enlightenment, and peace who guards with unwe unwearing diligence the gateway of his heart. That is the work we must do always remember when you feel resistance when you feel discomfort and pain you are being recalibrated you are entering a new level of awareness you're growing when you feel struggle or strife or oh my oh stress you're being recalibrated to a new level this happened to me last night as I, you know, just this weekend and reading different things and listening to different things. I feel, I feel a change. And what came to me was just when I do nothing, I suffer. When I do nothing, I suffer. Meaning when I do nothing for myself, for my mind, when I'm not putting the good in consciously, 
reading the good books, listening to the podcast, listening to the lessons or the recordings or doing my programs. When I'm not doing, I am by default choosing what already is. And what already is, no thank you. Think of life as a buffet, as a wonderful buffet. You can either walk around and choose the food you like and fill up your plate with all of your favorites, or you can stand there and just let what's given be slopped onto your plate. One requires you to walk around and choose. The other requires you to stay and do nothing and just have what's brought to you by whatever, whoever. Both take work. It takes work to sit there and give energy to, oh, God, I don't want this, oh, and be upset. It takes work to actually move your booty around, too. Choose. You are either running a program or a program is running you. There is a default program that is ran. Just like when you get a car, it comes stock. Well, back in the day, cloth seats, rolling windows, maybe just the heater, no AC, no tint on the windows. But when you want to customize your car, get tint on the windows, get all the bells and whistles for your comfort forever. You just got to do it once. You get to ride in that car forever or however long you have it. As opposed to getting into a stock car, whatever is given, every time it's hot outside, you wish you had that AC, you did not do the work to customize the car that you want. The car meaning the metaphor for life. You can either take a stock life, a stock car, or work and put the effort into getting all of the bells and whistles, so to speak, in your car or your life. Instead of sitting back, doing nothing in the stock car, just accepting what is status quo and watching everybody else in their nice cars or lives. Wow, they must be lucky. They must have money. They must have, mm -mm. they might have that now, but it, you always start from somewhere. Even if you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth, we see this all the time. It's not the money. It's the mindset. People who are rich with money falling out of their nostrils are jumping off buildings committing suicide. It's not about the money. It's about the mindset. Money only, you know, I think it just makes you more of what you are. If you're unhappy and you're depressed and you're anxious, you'll just be happy, depressed, and anxious I mean, unhappy, depressed, and anxious with money. That's why it's so important to do this inner work first, because whatever happens outside, it will be incidental. This is the essential. I heard this really good thing today. I'll end with this. A bird does not have faith in the branch. The bird does not have faith that the branch will hold it in the air. The branch is life, the circumstances, and it's incidental. The bird does not have faith in the branch. The bird has faith in its own wings, itself. So if the branch fell, it could still fly. That's what we must have. Whatever circumstances, whatever branch you're on right now, whatever job you have, whatever relationship you're in, whatever health you have, that's your branch. Whatever life insurance plan you have, <laughs> these are all illusory. They can go in an instant, truly. Even if you have a 100% money back guarantee, it, someone tells you they make vows to you. I promise, I swear, I will never cheat on you. It doesn't matter. People can die. There are no guarantees in life, none except death. So what is your branch? What branch are you sitting on? that you are making so essential? What outside of you are you making so essential? Anything outside is incidental. Inside is essential. No matter what happens, no matter what relationship, no matter what job, no matter what branch breaks, you'll be fine. 
you will be fine because you have faith in yourself, not in the branch, not in the relationship, not in the health, not in the job, not in the bank account. Have faith in yourself that no matter what, because no matter what happens outside, can't shake this, remain unmoved. This is why we put this work into ourselves, knowing ourselves, going inside, knowing yourself, studying yourself, expanding your awareness so that you are invulnerable, truly. And it takes daily work, daily work. Today, I come empty, empty rice bowl, childlike mind. I know nothing, Jon Snow. I know nothing. Today, I come humble. That is my goal. When you hear something you've already heard, you're right instead of I know. Delete I know from your vocabulary if you can today. Because if you know, that means no thank you. I need no more. I already know. Do you already know? Because if you knew it, you would do it. And if you ain't doing it, you don't know it. I hope that was helpful. Have a wonderful Monday. I will see y'all tomorrow.